subscribe to the channel. I quite often get asked if I have any simple tips for people just to improve the driving or riding. Um, so I thought I'd do um, a few little videos with five simple straightforward uh, tips on them. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to give you five tips that will help you avoid having an accident. So this video is for anybody that uses the roads in whatever capacity. You might just have passed your test, you might still be learning to drive, you might be a really experienced advanced driver, it's for motorcyclists, it's for anybody at all. And you don't have to be interested in driving. In fact, it's probably aimed at the people who aren't really the advanced drivers, the ones who aren't that interested in driving, because actually those people are more likely to make these mistakes and more likely to end up in the situation where they're having an accident as a result. So let's fairly briefly look at my five tips to prevent you from having an accident. And the five tips are these. Concentrate, eyes up, anticipate, back off and relax. So let's go through those in order and I'll explain what I mean. Let's start with concentrate. So realistically do you need to be concentrating a hundred percent of the time when you're driving the car? Now when you're first learning to drive absolutely it requires all your attention to drive the car and if for instance you're coming to see me to do an advanced driving test yeah the expectation is that you give it pretty much all of your concentration. But do you drive like that all the time? Be honest with yourself. Um, somebody made a comment on my last video that uh, that I shouldn't be driving and talking. It wasn't quite as straightforward a comment as that, but, uh, but that talking to the camera um, detracts from the concentration I should be putting into the driving. Well, I don't agree. I think it's perfectly, uh, I, think, I think we're all perfectly capable of driving and having a conversation at the same time. Maybe not on the phone, but certainly having a conversation with a passenger, doing what I do, speaking to the cameras. Um, I'm still giving more than enough concentration to the driving. I'm still thinking carefully about what I'm doing, but I've got some spare capacity to have a conversation. So I'm not suggesting that you should be giving 100% of your concentration to driving and nothing else. The problem is that most people and most drivers out there who haven't had any additional driver training, are barely giving 10% of the concentration to the driving. Driving is easy these days, this car is easy to drive, it's only got two pedals, semi-automatic gearbox, power steering, I'm isolated from what's happening outside, uh, 40 miles an hour down this hill feels like nothing, so it's very easy to be distracted and to be thinking about other things when I'm driving and that's where the problem comes in. Um, if I'm distracted and I'm thinking about something else or I'm fiddling with my sat nav or having a conversation with passengers and turning around um, and a vehicle emerges from the junction on the right there um, it's going to really significantly increase my reaction time to that situation occurring. So I'm not talking about being distracted to the extent that we're the ones doing something wrong. Everybody out there is, is out there to get you and you need to take responsibility and look for the situations that are going to cause you a problem. And if you're not concentrating enough, you're going to miss things. And I see so many distracted drivers, distracted by the children in the car, distracted by the music or the sat-nav, distracted by the mobile phone, checking the Facebook status, just crashed, lol. You've got to be really concentrating on what you're doing. You are moving a ton and a half of metal down the road at speed. And even at this speed, 30 miles an hour, if I hit somebody, the likelihood is I'm going to kill them. So I've got to take responsibility for that. So the first tip is just up your concentration levels a bit. And the best tip I can give you for that is every time you get in the car or you get on the bike, it's relevant if you ride a bike as well, or a bus or whatever it is you drive, as you get in, just as you start in the engine, think to yourself, right, I'm going to be driving now. It's a complex series of actions, but we get used to it, we get muscle memory, we don't have to physically think about every action that we're carrying out in the car once we're an experienced driver. But it doesn't take away the risks that are involved in, you, in moving the car down the road. So just because you don't have an accident every day and you don't see accidents every day doesn't mean they're not happening and doesn't mean that you're not very likely to have one if you're not applying good principles of safe driving. So the first of my five tips is concentrate, but concentrate enough. You don't need to absolutely have 
golf ball eyes looking down the road staring concentrating thinking about nothing else telling people not to speak to you it's not that level of concentration but maintain sufficient concentration use about 50 to 60 percent of your capacity to think about driving the car and to think about the things that are happening out there because it's what's happening out there that matters and it's what everybody else is doing that matters so then we come to the second tip eyes up I'm generalising a little bit, but the majority of drivers out there, again, who haven't had any additional training, will just stare at the vehicle in front of them. That's, that's about as far ahead as they're looking. Or if there isn't a vehicle in front of them, they will maybe look 10 metres, 30 feet in front of the car, and they will react to anything that's happening in that small space in front of the car. You need to change that. You need to get your eyes up. Some people talk about having your eyes on main beam. I talk about having your eyes up. I want your eyes in the distance. I want to be looking at the far distance now, around this corner, looking at the parked cars on the left, and working my way back. And what I'm doing is I'm building up a mental picture as to what's gonna happen as I go along the road. Looking at the red car on the offside there and thinking whether it's gonna pull out. Looking at the old Volkswagen bus and wondering if it's reversing out of that junction. Looking in the distance now at the road bending round to the left and working my way back with these parked vehicles on the near side, on the left hand side. Just noticed an indicator come on on the small hatchback that's gone out of view and on the blue Fiesta in front. So I know there's a junction to the right and they're going to be turning. So you can see where I'm looking now and that means that I'm not coming around this corner and suddenly being faced with a Fiesta that's turning right and having to rely on my reactions. What I'm doing is looking in the distance and planning ahead. So concentrate, get your eyes up, look in the distance, work your way back. The third tip links in with those observations, anticipate. So your average driver, your average motorcyclist out there reacts to what they can see happening, but there's more to it than that. We should be making driving plans when we're driving along. And we make driving plans based on what we can see, but also on what we can't see and what we can reasonably expect to happen. There's the anticipation. So for instance, I can see there's a green traffic light there. Looks like a pedestrian crossing. I can't see if there's anybody waiting at the crossing. I could reasonably expect for that crossing to change if somebody's pressing the button. What you can see, what you can't see, what you can reasonably expect to happen. So I'm not just looking to react to the things that are happening, I'm looking to guess what might happen. And I use a combination of my experience, my observations, the training that I've had, and really just common sense. This is common sense. You don't necessarily need any extra training to put a bit of anticipation into your driving. So I know there's a junction on the left here, I'm anticipating that maybe a vehicle will emerge to that junction. So I keep checking back into it and looking for movements. And if it does emerge, what am I going to do? Well, I'm ready to sort of move away or break. It's all very well and good anticipating what's going to happen, but we need to know what we're going to do as well. So we have a plan in mind as to what we're going to do if something happens. Green traffic lights are a good example. We've got priority, but it doesn't mean that another vehicle won't come through on the red light. I used to do it all the time when I was in the police, two or three times a shift. Yes, I'd have blue lights and sirens on, but for me here now, the driver with priority going through those green lights, I should anticipate that there is a chance there might be an emergency vehicle coming through. And I'm ready for that, I'm ready to clear the path and I'm ready to let them through. So concentrate, eyes up, anticipate. The next tip is back off. This is something I see every single day on the roads. Even on the way up here to film today, it was uh, somebody was doing it to me. People drive too close to the car in front or the vehicle in front. And it's, a, it's an error, it's a fault that on the whole goes unpunished. But at the same time, it's a really, really common cause of accidents. So rear end shunt type accidents where the vehicle behind runs in the back of the vehicle in front are very common. And on the whole, generally those accidents are caused because people drive too close to the car in front. So you get too if you get too close to the vehicle in front, you cause yourself all kinds of problems. First of all, you can't see far ahead, and that was one of my earlier tips, wasn't it? Eyes up. If I get too close to the vehicle in front, it starts to fill my field of view, it starts to fill the windscreen. 
I'm losing my view of what's happening in front. I'm losing my view of that mini roundabout. I'm losing my view of the other traffic. If I get close to this vehicle now, look how much it fills my field of view. And that field of view is right where I need it to be. It's everything that's going to happen in front of this figure. It's everything that's going to cause the vehicle in front to brake suddenly. So if I drop back into a two or three second following position on that vehicle in front, and actually he's going above the speed limit, so I'm going to back off him a bit now. But if I back off a little bit, all of a sudden I've got a good view of the road in front. I can see what's going to happen. Now, yeah, one of the advantages of having a good following position is that I can stop safely if the vehicle in front brakes suddenly and without warning. But actually, if I've backed off, I can see in front of them. I can see if they're going to back. I can see if there's something they're going to need to brake for. So not only can I stop if they brake suddenly, I can see if there's something that they're going to brake for. I get a good view of whether the speed limit's changing. I got a good view that this was coming into a, a 20 limit. But well, there's other advantages of a good following position. If you're the one that's being tailgated, if you're the one that's got the driver behind really close up your backside, there's a danger they're going to run in the back of you. But if you extend your distance from the vehicle in front, and this is always my tip when I'm dealing with, with tailgaters, is extend your distance from the vehicle in front so that if they do brake suddenly, you're not having to suddenly brake and there's less chance then that the idiot behind who's driving too close is going to run in the back of you. Other advantages, you can see when it's clear to move into the overtake as well, so if you're driving a bit more progressively, you might think that you need to be really close to the vehicle in front in order to get an overtake, but actually by hanging back a little bit, it opens up your view, and you're still close enough to get into the overtake and get past that vehicle nice and safely. A couple of other advantages as well, you'll spot defects in the road surface if you're further back. If you drive really close to the car in front, they'll drive into the potholes and so will you. If you hang back a little bit, you'll see the pothole and you'll have time to react to it. And also when the weather's poor and it's raining, it keeps you out of all the spray and again allows you to keep your vision in the distance. So back off, extend that distance between you and the vehicle in front. And the last tip relates to attitude, it's relax. If you're tense when you're driving or riding, if there's tension, if you've got uh, mental tension, if you're stressed, if you're physically tense in the car, your decision making isn't going to be at its best. One of the worst things you can be in the car or on the bike is in a rush and in a hurry because that adds additional stress and it makes you feel like you need to drive or ride faster and get where you're going and you're not making clear logical decisions about what you want to do. One of the elements of uh, police driver training that was very important was this attitudinal training because emergency services drivers got to be really clear, they've got to keep emotions out of the driving, they've got to think logically about what they're doing and concentrate on the driving itself, not on the incident that they're going to. So in our own driving, in our own normal day-to-day -day driving, it's easy to get stressed, it's easy to get stressed by things that are happening at home, at work, and you've got to try and train yourself not to forget that stuff, but just to not let it affect your driving. Get in the car, a bit like I said about uh, concentration at the beginning. Get in the car, remind yourself you're moving a ton and a half of metal down the road. As you set off, try to just, just leave that stuff temporarily behind you until you get to your destination. You might want to think about how you sit in the car, for instance, because that can allow you to be a little bit more relaxed. Some people are really hunched up over the steering wheel and they tend to grip the steering wheel with a very tight grip. Actually, you just want to be relaxed. Drop your hands down the wheel a little bit. Drop your shoulders a little bit. Keep that nice, relaxed, relaxed seating position. You need to be physically relaxed and you need to be mentally relaxed to drive a car. If you're not in the right state of mind, get somebody else to drive. Or don't drive. Get a taxi. If you don't feel like you're in the right state of mind to be driving, you shouldn't drive. That sounds a bit preachy, that. It's not easy, is it? I appreciate that everybody has stresses in their lives. We've got to try and learn to just leave them outside the car. You can pick them up again once you finish your journey. So those are my five tips to help you avoid having an accident. 
concentrate, eyes up, anticipate, back off and relax. Just try thinking about some of those principles the next time you're out in the car or out on the bike, put them into practice. I promise you, the more you put that stuff into practice, the more you're going to significantly reduce the chances of you being involved in an accident. And remember, it's not just about what you do in the car, it's about what everybody else is doing. It's alright saying, well, I have priority here, but this Porsche is pulling out. Just because you've got priority doesn't mean you'll get it. So take responsibility for your own actions, don't blame everything on everybody else, learn from your mistakes and put those five key principles into action. Concentrate, eyes up, anticipate, back off and relax. Anyway, that's it for this video. Nice, short, snappy one for a change. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to know more about advanced and performance driving and riding, go and have a look at the website, reglocal.com. Loads of information there about advanced driving and riding. And give us a follow on Twitter, at reglocal. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.